Um, let's just jump right in. Uh, if you if you do follow us on Facebook, and presumably you do because you're uh, you're watching this video. Yesterday we posted about uh, an insect problem that I have just been getting a lot of you know emails, phone calls, and branch samples brought by, and then I've also just been seeing it a lot as I'm out meeting with uh, clients and things like that. I'm seeing a lot of it, and it's called boxwood leaf miner. And so I brought a, a couple branches over to show you uh, what's going on here. So you can check out that post. We do have a good uh, resource for that on our website as well. So you can, you know, if you're not taking notes this morning, you can uh, get online at wasconursery.com backslash learn, and you'll uh, find a little handout about boxwood leaf miner. But I wanted to run through this because even after the post, then I was getting a lot of a lot more questions um, in regards to that insect. So uh, first, I want to say there is something called boxwood blight. Boxwood blight is not boxwood leaf miner. There's a lot of uh, stuff on the internet and uh, various other professional publications about boxwood blight. Boxwood blight has been a major problem over in um, in Europe, specifically in England. Um, it is a problem in the United States, but predominantly on the East Coast, not so much around here. Um, so the boxwood blight, we're not seeing boxwood blight around here. That's not what this is. That's not what I'm seeing around town. Boxwood blight is very different. It basically will, um, it'll cause some yellowing like this, but the, the branches will become completely bare of leaves. It's a, it's just kind of a totally different thing altogether. So a lot of times when I start talking about this, people are like, oh, it's boxwood blight. If you're in a different part of the country, maybe, but not around here. Um, and again, different, uh, kind of different pattern to, uh, to the sort of destruction of the plant, I guess. Okay, so we're going to talk about boxwood leaf miner, though. Boxwood leaf miner is an insect that lays eggs. It's a little fly-like insect that will lay eggs on the leaf. This typically happens in May to early June-ish is when the insect is actively flying. So it's a very small fly-like insect. Um, sometimes you'll see a lot of them. If you wave your hand through the bush, um, you're going to you're going to have lots of these little flies uh, kind of swarming out of the plant. Um, but what they're, what they're doing is they're mating, and they're going to lay eggs on the leaf surface. The eggs are going to uh, hatch. They're going to kind of uh, start to feed, basically. And the eggs are deposited right into the layer of the upper layer of the leaf. And when the eggs hatch, that little larva is going to start feeding, and it's feeding on the basically on the meat of the sandwich. So if you imagine two pieces of bread with a piece of meat in between there, the insect is feeding on that piece of meat. So it's not feeding on the bread at all, just on the inside there. And so it leaves the upper and lower leaf surface intact, but it's eating everything inside. And so a lot of times what you're going to end up with is things like this. And I'm sure this is hard to see, but we've got a green leaf with a big kind of tan or white blotch right in the middle. And what that is, is basically the insect has completely eaten all the meaty part of the leaf out of there. And if you hold it up to the light, you can almost see right through it. It almost becomes transparent or translucent, I guess. So that's boxwood leaf miner. Boxwood leaf miner will cause some, uh, oftentimes like a blistering on the leaf surface. And when it really, uh, when, the, when you get a lot of, of those larva feeding, the leaf will basically turn completely tan or white to the point where it just, you know, kind of looks dead. Now it's often confused for or thought of to be winter burn because winter burn can cause that same thing. If, if you were fertilizing your boxwood last year or if, or if we had a overly warm uh, fall time and the boxwood is pushing out new growth that doesn't have a chance to harden off, before winter comes, sometimes that new growth gets affected by the winter, uh, especially if we have a really rough winter, and so you get some winter damage. And that is out on the exterior of the plant, typically. Well, the same thing happens with the, um, with the boxwood leaf miner. They are predominantly on the exterior of the plant. So like if we look at this branch here, again, probably a little harder to see, but up at the top, you can see that there's a lot of leaves that are affected. They're tan or white in color. And the further we go down the branch, the more we have nice, green, healthy leaves. Because this insect tends to lay its eggs on the perimeter of the plant uh, versus down inside the plant. 
It's not impl impossible for it to be down in here, but predominantly on the exterior of the plant. So sometimes it gets confused with winter damage. And sometimes it is just winter damage. Sometimes if you have a branch that is tan in color, it might just be winter damage, and you may be able just to trim that out and uh, not have to worry. Um, so boxwood leaf miner, the adult lays the eggs, the eggs hatch, the larva starts feeding on the leaf. They're going to feed basically all summer long, summer into early fall. That's the best time to spray them. Spraying them right now will do little to nothing. Um, it's one of the reasons why I like to do this. The, the um, common thought process of if it flies, it dies, or you know, just spray anything on there and, and some of these all-purpose insecticides that you may find at the hardware store or, or unfortunately sometimes even some of the uh, lawn care companies that do, uh, you know, hey, we're going to fertilize your lawn and we're going to spray all your bushes for insect and disease and all that kind of stuff. That process just doesn't work very well because at this time of year, boxwood leaf miner is inside the leaf. It's not feeding right now, so most insecticides are going to be, uh, you know, completely uh, ineffective. Um, it's not until the, the insect starts feeding in that, you know, basically June through, I guess, September-ish, roughly, um, time frame is when you're going to be most effective. So uh, a lot of times you get a kind of a false sense of confidence when you paid someone that you thought knew what they were doing and they're going to spray all the plants in your yard and it's going to take care of everything. Um, but in reality, it's just a waste of chemical. And that's one of my goals is if there's an issue, we want to help you treat it, but we don't want to uh, be using chemicals, um, I guess, uh, um, without, you know, we want to be more judicious about the use of our chemicals, I guess is what I'm saying. So, um, so that's the timing. Midsummer, apply a systemic insecticide like uh, systemic insect control. Let's see what we have over here. So either of these are going to work. Um, this one you just mix with water in a pump sprayer and spray it on. This one just attaches to the hose. Um, you can also use a soil drench. Um, the soil drenches you'd want to apply after the plant flowers. So boxwood do have a flower, it's not real showy, um, but the, it does attract pollinators. And so we don't want to be applying a systemic insecticide during the time that the uh, pollinators are out. So if you're gonna spray, uh, or if you're going to do a drench, do it right after the blooming time. Uh, it's kind of a little, small, fuzzy, yellowish flower kind of inside the plant. And you might see some little uh, tiny flies or bees kind of pollinating. So um, that would be the time of year that you'd want to avoid the use of these products. If you think you have boxwood uh, leaf miner and you're unsure, if you do, you can take one of the leaves that has the blisters on it or, uh, you know, something like these ones that I showed you, you can actually tear the leaf in half. And I actually got uh, lucky right on that first. So I tore it right in half and right there I can actually see one of the little uh, larva and they're actually moving at this time of year, but they're not feeding right now. So you'll be able to see them move their little tiny green specks, um, but they're gonna be right inside. Again, if you'd kind of peel back one, of the, one or the other, the upper or lower leaf surface or just tear it in half, and kind of open it up like a little pocket or like a like a pita bread or something. Open it up and you're going to see those little things in there. They're about to pupate. They're about to change forms from this larval state into an adult form. And so they're going to pupate. They're going to come out. They're going to mate. They're going to lay eggs. And then the process just starts all over again. So you can pop those open and see. Um, if you want to just, uh, if you're unsure or if you think maybe you have a, a slight infection, then you can spray sort of a preventative spray. Both of the products that I just mentioned, uh, those could be sprayed uh, at that same time frame, that kind of mid-summer. So, you know, mid to late June, start then, anytime through July or August. It's best to use these products early in the morning when it's cool. Um, you don't want to do it in the heat of the day because, of course, at that time of year, it's going to be much warmer. The sun is going to be intense, and these products have a little bit of oil in them, and so we don't want to burn the foliage with it. So... That's a bit on boxwood leaf miner.